Welcome to class two of getting started with Excel for data analytics. This is a step-by-step -step guide tutorial session for class two. Um, a recap to class one. In class one, we introduced um, Excel interface and basic Excel and how it works and everything that we needed to understand the fundamentals of Excel. In this class two, we'll be going in depth into some of these formulas. As you can see from the, the cards that will just come up now, if, if if you haven't watched the class one and you're just meeting the class two, kindly um click on the on the card that is that will be up on the screen to take you to the class one so you can follow through on what we've done and everything. Now, if you look at the introduction of what we did in class one, we introduced um, the basic concept of how some of these formulas work and everything that we needed to know. In this class, we'll go a little bit in depth to some of them to see uh, and then apply some of the practical approaches. Uh, also use some formulas and, and see how they work. You see more of examples, uh, which, we'll, which we'll see as, as time goes on. As a recap to what we did the last time, we have also brought in some few from some few uh, examples here to remind us of how some of these uh, operations work in Excel. So this is just a uh, pretty forward. If you look by the left side, this is um, examples, more like instructions that will lead you through the tabs and it, they are very pretty forward. By the way, if you need this material, you have to put it on the comment section that you need the material so that I, I I know those who are following me and those who are really interested in this in this very tutorial and so that I can also track your progress where you are at in your in your learning. So if you need this particular material for this class too, um like this video, put it on the comment section that you need this material and it will be sent to you. Also drop your email. If you are not comfortable with dropping your email, just drop your interest on the comment section and we'll reach out to you. So let's let's carry on. So we we'll use this as the input cell to just show simple um, uh, operations using some of the mathematical um, formulas that we we'll have. So here for addition, how do we do the addition? So if you look by the side, we say to add in this is F F three for F three. We'll just type equal sign. Equal sign is what initiates the formula, right? That's what initiates the formula for, or that's what puts Excel into formula mode so that we can then put every other thing that we need in that regard. So we'll put equal sign, then we we'll select what, what, what is it that we want to add, which is one and two. So we we'll select the cell and then we we'll say plus, plus sign, and no, sorry, and then we we'll select this. So this plus this for the addition, which is three. So this this is the area that will show you that you are getting. So any, anything you get here that is different from here means it's wrong. So you must get all the answers the way they are here. That way you will know. Then again, uh, if we do for C3 again, the first sign, remember following the instruction for this, for the, for this, for the subtract, for the minus sign, which is for the subtraction, we'll do, it says C3. So C3 will always be will always be the first cell in our formula. So C3 minus C4 is giving us minus one. Then again, equal sign C3 for multiplication. We use asterisk for multiplication plus this will give us two. You see how it is matching. Then again, the first sign, backslash is for your division, divided by, divided by this, again, we use this. Then for the power, we can also do raised to power using Excel. How do we do raised to power? So there's all called carrot, you know, so um, this is like a carrot. This, this is like a carrot symbol or more like raised to power. So we'll say equal sign for here, equal sign, then one 
race to power using a carrot. Your carrot is shift six. That's your carrot, shift six. Then two should give us one. Right, so I, I mean, in, in, a, in the actual sense, I left this area for you to fill it. Just more like uh, once you see a space like this is well of if you want to try it yourself, that way you see how you learn things yourself. So moving to the next tab, so we we'll see how we we'll send that of the mathematical operations. In this case, we will see how we we'll apply some of the some of the formulas as well using some and everything that we've seen. So this is just a way of introducing us. Like I said, this is a recap of some of the things we did in the last time in a very simple way. There are so many ways we can do some. There are different ways we can do some. You saw the we saw the one we did with a plus sign. This is another one we'll do it by typing the sum, which we'll see. So um, in if we follow the instructions here, it says under the amount column for for the fruit G cell, which is this is D seven. Under this amount, we should enter what sum. So let's try to enter this equals sign. Sum. Once you type your formula, you double tap, you double click. Once you double click, it opens the bracket. Then another thing we need to understand: once you have consecutive cells, what I can also call range of cells, all you need to do is just to drag them. You may not even need to type anything; just drag that particular cell that you, you want to add, and then close your bracket and enter. That gives us seventy. Or, I mean, sorry, one seventy, as you can see. There are also other ways we can do that. Which other ways can we do that? We can select this and then go to formula, go to auto sum, and then just press equal sign. Uh, sorry, just press some sign. I mean, click on some sign, and then we'll, we'll get 140. You see, you see different ways we have applied. We use this by typing the formula. This is by using the auto, auto sum wizard. This is like autosome wizard or function or by operation. Uh, another way we can also try this is so we've seen that of typing, we've seen that of the autosome, right? Now let's try that of the D15 using alt sign. So you see, so you see that we have three different ways now, or even four, because if you consider that of the plus sign, that's three different ways for this particular tab that we've used now to do sum. Now, another way you can try to use sum is what? To put equal sign, no, sorry, not to put equal sign, uh, to use alt, alt key. For those using Mac, I think your alt key is the same as your option key. So your option key and your equal sign. So alt key, Alt key for those using Mac is the same as option. And for those using Windows, of course, you will always see the alt, alt key. So press the, the alt key and the equal sign at the same, not simultaneously, but the same. You press it at the same time. So all you need to do is just to click on this on this cell and then press alt and equal sign at the same time. And then you see once you Press two of them at the same time, this will come out. So it's just like an automatic way, a, a keyboard automatic way of doing the sum. So it, it automatically puts every formula. All you need to do is just to press enter. And that's it. See, this is another way we can do that. Now, um, with what we've done here with the sum, like I said, this space is for those watching this video, is for you to try. It's for you to try your your luck with what we are doing and test yourself. So this is for you. If if we did all of this with some, well, how can you be able to do this with count? Try it yourself and, and then tell me in the comment section. Um, then you can also try, these are like further um, details, um, explanations on how, on how some of the, the sum functions work. Now moving to average. For average, the same thing that we did with with sum is the same for average. So if we follow the instructions step by step, so for the D seven, we can just select 
if we, if we want to know the average of the range of these numbers, we'll first of all select the range of numbers, we'll go to auto sum under formula tab, go to auto sum, and then click on average 4.2, 42.5. Sorry. Now, another way we can do this, let's, let's do it by what? Now, another thing I want you to understand, or I want to show you is the intelligence of Excel. If I select this, without me not even having to type the formula or anything, there's all called status bar, which is, there is something that will come out here. That's what we call status bar. There is something that will come out here on the status bar. So it will tell us the sum, the count, and the average. I think these are like three basic things. It tells us when, when you select a range of number, when you select a range of number, Excel tells you the count of what you've selected. If, if there are numbers, it will tell you the sum and then the average. That's what we we'll see now. If we select this, you see what I just said about the status bar. So we have under the average, we have 35 as the average, we have count. So which means the count is like four numbers, 50, 30, 10, and 50. Then the sum is what, 140. So on the status bar already, you will see sort of a, a, a mini sum, statistical summary of the range of number that you've selected. So another way we can do that, we'll try this with the average, right? This is a demonstration to show you how the status bar work. Now let us do this sum by typing, following this instruction that we'll have here. Do the sum by typing, which is equal sign. Then we'll type mid, we'll type, sorry, we'll type average. So a good thing is once you type the average, there will be a suggestion of what you need to do, what, what is it that you are looking for. So you can see how the average formula just came out like this. So all you need to do is to double click, double click. Once you double click, the first bracket will open, waiting for you to now key in the range of cells that you want to work with. So I double tap and then I select this down, then close the brackets. And then this is 52. If you look at it, if you, if you look at it, we see your average is average of D10. This is D10. So everything from D10, everything from D10 to another, another way to see what I told you about status bar. See what we calculated and look at the status bar. You see that the status bar also is what? 52. The count is five. The sum is 260. So you can, you can, you can also try this on your own for median and mood, anyone that you want to just try it before we move to the next one. Then for, for, min, for minimum and maximum, so this is whereby in a, in a range of cell, it tells you what number is the minimum amongst the range of cells that you selected and which one is the maximum from the number you selected. So if, if you follow the instruction by the left-hand side, Again, all we need to do is let's select this and use the, the auto sum wizard. If we select this, you see there are two ways I'm showing you this the auto sum wizard, which is all we have here, and then the one you type yourself. That's to like show you how two ways you can, if, if, even if you forget the formula, you can come to the formulas and check where the formula is and type them and get it. So, We've, we've selected the cell and then we'll go to minimum, which is to tell us from the cell that we selected which one is the minimum from all of them. If we select minimum, that's 20. And if you look at 50, 20, 60, 40, 20 is the minimum. Let's also apply the same thing for maximum, but this time around, we'll type the formula instead of using the auto sign for maximum. So we'll just do equal sign, maximum, double click. As the maximum we select is, is open, we we'll, we'll then key in the range of cells. And then of course, and that is 50. If you look at, of course, 50 is the, even though there are two 50s, but the, they are all the maximum. It is, there can only be one maximum number. If there are many of them, you, you just pick one. 
Uh, you can also try this. Uh, okay, let's also try this on your own using either the auto sign or or the the auto sum wizard, or you can type it yourself. You can just try any of these and see how that goes. Um, uh, you can also try this again. You can also try this and test yourself and see that that way you you, you learn. You pick it up from there. Next thing is exploratory data analysis. Exploratory data analysis. This is very, very important. This is where it start getting interesting because as a, as a data analyst or as a data professional, even as a data scientist, the first one of the first the, one of the first things you do is to what to look at your data, explore your data, see see how your data is like, what 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 is the nature of your data, how was was the data types of your data how many numerical columns you have how many of um, how many um dimensional features you have so these are all the things you look at how many dates that how many dates columns you have how do you work around it do you need anything to take from your dates column do you, do you want to take out the months from your from your dates column or the days from your dates column is there anything you want to look at from your dates column? Do you want to extract the year from your dates column? So these are like all the things you look at in 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 the broad sense of things, and then see how it um applies to you and also in the scope of the project that you are doing. So exploratory data analysis is very very important, and this is also what we'll be doing. We'll, we'll show you um some of how you can apply this in even in Excel because this is. Like we said, Excel for what? data analytics. So you will see how we apply exploratory data analysis in Excel. Um, see how we handle the date and the time format. See how to use um, conditional formatting, if statement. If statement is like um, is very very important because it is with if statement that there are a lot of conditions um, that we create on Excel. With if statement, we can we can tell. So if if this is this, do this. If this is that, do this. That's basically what if statement is about. If 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 the age of if age of no if the, if the age of the pupils in the class is above four, count them. If if they are if they are less than ten, what is their average? So these are like there are a lot of things you can do with if statement. The same thing goes with some if. The same just like just like what I've said now. The sum if the sum if sum if there is a certain criteria a certain criteria that is met count if so there is always a criteria in a, in every if, if statement the same goes with average and every other arithmetical um statement that possible that you have that you know uh, ma maximum if minimum if all of these there is a whole lot of them they will also see how we handle errors how do we handle errors. Uh, you know the, the naming the, the name error the, the 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 function error the value error so how do you know your error and how do you work around your errors also see from there we'll begin to see how can I apply some quick analysis just from our range of cells before we move to the next thing so here we'll see how we'll handle it like I said the instructions the instructions on the left hand side they are pretty, pretty forward, straightforward. So we'll, take, we'll follow the instructions one by one and see how we we'll get to a desired result. So first thing is, wherever you are, right, all you need to do is just to type in the formula for, to, for today, which you can see equals to today fun function. So today is a function which tells you the date of today. That's what that function does. It tells you the date of today. Right. So if you just type in equal sign and then today, as today is, I remember what I said about function. Once you type it, it comes out double tap and then it opens the bracket and then you close it. It's just, it's just um, a function of its own. You may not necessarily need to put anything inside. You don't, not necessarily, you don't need to put anything inside because you just want to get the today date. So that's what today function gets. So once you click equal sign, you see it tells it tells you the today's which is today's today's date is twenty third 
of March 2024. So this is American date sign. Yours might be depending on depending on your system. Yours might be 23, which is 23rd March 2024. But this is American date sign. That is why it is like this, please, just in case. And then if we also put your so let's let's assume let's assume a particular date for birthday. So let's say let's say um zero one first January nineteen ninety. Yeah, I think <laughs> that's a good example. So first January nineteen ninety, right? So if we put it now, this is a, how it from today to the sample date of birth. You can know how many days from when you were born to now. How many days from when you were born to now? All you need to do is just to follow the instruction, like we've said. So that means we the same way we we operate with numbers is the same way we can even operate with what date date formats. That's just simply what this is about, which is how you can handle what dates. Now, for us to get the number of days from here. We can just do equal sign, equal sign, right? This is equal sign. Then when we have the 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 date of birth is D7, as you can see, this is D7. We are following the instruction. Minus minus what today is the which is this equals to. Now you see what we have here. So one one will be like, why is it minus? I mean, it's just the the idea is this is the number of days from when you from when this is the number of days from first January 1990 to today's date, which is 23rd of March 2024. The number of days is 12,500 days. Perfect round number. 12,500 days. Now, if you're uncomfortable with this um, minus and don't want to see it, well, there are so many ways you can handle negative signs. If you don't want to see a negative sign, all you need to do is to put what we call absolute value. Absolute value is a function that converts negative signs to, to positive signs. So if we do that, we'll just come to, uh, it will just come to the formula already. See, let me click out because uh, I'm already on the phone. Let me enter it. Now, first of all, that we can edit the formula, which is once you click here, you now go to the address bar, the formula bar, I mean to say. You just go to the formula bar and then type ABS. The ABS comes out, right? The ABS, say, Read what it says because it said gives you a snippet explanation of what of what that formula is about or what that formula does. So look at it say returns absolute value of a number, a number without its sign. That's what absolute. So because we don't want the I mean days cannot be in minus because of how the dates work. So it enters minus. Now we don't need the minus. All we need to is just the real number. So this is one way you can remove the manner, which is what absolute word value. All you need to do is just to put absolute value before that formula, whatever formula it is that is giving you a negative. All you need to do is to put absolute word value before that number. So I'll double click and then it opens the bracket. I'll close the bracket. So this function is now inside the bracket of ABS, which is the absolute value. Once I click enter, the the negative goes out. So that's just like one way we can try it. Um, let's just give an example. So let's say, let's say you borrow the, okay, so if you follow the instructions here, let's say you borrow the book from a library and you borrowed it today and you're given a grace period of 10 days, for instance. And if you want to know when you will return it, when you return it, this is another way to see how can combine date and number. How can I operate it with date and number? So if you want to know when you will return it, so this is the grace period, which is or call it your your holding period, right? Or your borrowing time. So this is the grace period you are given to return the book, and this is 
there is a way you took the book. So if you want to know where you will return it, all you need is just equal sign, right? And then click on today's date and then plus the grace that you are giving, which is if if you look at um the, my formula is blocking it, but we can trust it, which is D, it is D D10, D10. So type D10. D10. Once you type D10, of course sign. So this is the due date. Remember, that book was borrowed today. It a 10 days of grace to have the book. So if you want to know when you return it, remember what I said about American, so that whatever you are using, you will know the difference. This is April 2nd, 2024, because this is American date, not British date. British date means the day comes before the month, but America means the month comes before the day. So this is April 2nd, 2024. So you took that book March 23rd and you return it April 2nd, which is 10 days of war to grace. That's one way we can operate it. So that of we've, we've done that of the today. If you want to see how you can also handle, let's all want to know the exact time now we want to know the time now that will have the exact time so all you need to just equal sign and then type now so let's let's see what now tells us now returns the current dates and time formatted as date and time right so it's formatted as date and time but you can you can that's natural that's the default format but you can always change it to what time, as simple as that. You can just go and change it to what to time. So we'll press we'll double tap. And then just like today, just like today, you just open and close the bracket. The same thing we're doing with today, you do it to the now. And so this is this is 7.52 p.m. So it's like night around here. So this is 7.52 p.m. Um, if you follow the instruction on how you can format it, just in case if yours is giving you a different, you can easily come to the home. So this is in time. So maybe when you do it and it is like this, um, uh, maybe it's like, um, I don't know, maybe like date and time, but let me try this. Um, Hang on a minute. So if you press uh, control. So yeah, if you press control one, so this, this is this is the different format. So we chose the time. This is the different format we want to select, right? So we chose what? The time. We chose time, which is to, to tell us if you want it by PM, if you want 24 hours, if you want by PM, if you want it to include the seconds, if you want it to include the seconds, but by 12 hours, it will also do so. If you want it to include, I mean, so this is like, you can see different ways. If you want it even to include the date, the date and the time. So these are like different formats you can want. We, we want it to appear. This is the way it can appear. So we just want it by what? PM. So you can know. Uh, so the 24 hours doesn't confuse you just in case. Now, another interesting thing that we'll do here is to see how you can, let's say, um, let's say as a secretary, I mean, this is a bit of uh, what some of the, what's, what's some of the things um we do in, in our day-to-day -day, um, office works. So let's say you're a secretary in your office and you're handling, you're handling the time logs of, of employers when they come in, when they go out and stuff like that. So this is also another, this is how you can also handle the timings from, from using Excel. Just a little bit, the, the instructions are pretty clear which if you follow the instructions one by one, you see, but the idea is the, the time out is the biggest, is the is the letter time. So the idea is use letter time minus 
Letter time, my boss. Earlier time. That's how you get your hours. Letter time, my boss. Earlier time. So now this is the logic behind this. We want to know the actual hours worked. So now this person came in 8 a.m., right? Went out for lunch around in, at 12 p.m., came in at 1 p.m., and then left, finished work at 5 p.m. How many hours has this person worked? So we we'll evaluate these hours using what formulas, Excel formula. So the first thing we we'll do is to initiate equal sign. Remember what I said about equals and then open bracket. Open the bracket or we'll open bracket. Now, because okay, if you open the bracket, first thing I want to calculate is what is the what is the time when he when the person came in and when the person left. So remember what I said, letter time and was what earlier time. So letter time is is 5 p.m., right? Minus when did the when did the person leave? The person left. The person left at five p.m., which is later time. But the person came in at eight eight a.m. Right. So that's the first thing we do. You calculate the the time came in and the time out. Now this is the time he came in and the time. This is the hours spent from when he came in to when he left. Right. Now, if we evaluate that, that hours, but they are telling us that this person also went for lunch. So we we'll, we'll now have to evaluate the time he took out for lunch so that we can minus it from the total time spent from when he came in and when he left, right? So we'll do minus, we'll open another bracket. Open another bracket. Now, remember what I said about time. Is always the later time minus what? Later time minus the earlier time. That's that's how we check. Later time minus earlier time. So we can do this. Um, we can do. We can do. So later time is is one p.m. So one p.m. minus minus lunch time. Lunch time is. Lunch out, lunch in, which is when he came in from lunch, 1 p.m. minus lunch out, when the person went out for lunch. So we select this. Also close the bracket. Now, because they are like this, I mean, we basically can get it like this, but just to put it in a, in a normal mathematical format, you can enclose everything in a bracket or we can still just leave them like this. But let's just, you know, and I'm not done. Yes, yes. I'm not done. I'm not done. It, uh, yes. I want to close the bracket. And Excel was warning me that I was about making mistakes. So I want to go and open the other bracket. So you see, this is the, the black bracket is the what? The bigger bracket. Why the, the first red bracket is for the, the total time. And the last and the last bracket is for the time for lunch. As you've done it like this, you just press enter. Now, when it is like this, oh no, there is something we missed out. So we are supposed to now times it by 24 hours, sorry, because we are dealing with 12 hours. So times it by 24 hours so that we can see what it is in hours. Right. So um why are we still getting? Yeah, we still getting some error. Um, okay. Let me check something. Why are we? Why are we still getting? Oh, okay. No, 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 no. After the, the, this should be out, not before. What we did is the 24 only times this. But when we've enclosed it with brackets, then we'll times it by 24. Sorry, that was a mistake. Um, 
Yes. Yes, that sounds about right. Let me check the instructions here. Hope you are correct. Yes, if you follow the instructions, you see that we are correct in this. So this is so this is the actual time this person works. This person works for what eight hours. Actual time in hours, please. This is total hours. So this is what eight hours. This is the actual time in what in hours. Uh yes, so that's for the date and time. So we'll move we'll move to we'll see how we can also now remember this is also a recap of what we did of what we did with the in our class one, which is splitting, concatenating of names and all that. So let's assume that you are working in Excel where the first name and the last name are in separate columns and you want to put them together into a one column. There are so many ways we can do that. So many ways that we can do that. If you follow the instructions here, they are pretty clear. So we we'll, we'll take the first example, right? So you say in cell E3, which is, this is cell E3, we should enter what? D. So ampersand is also another way to concatenate strings. Remember, in our class one, we use concat from the concat function. But another way, just like an operator, another way we can use concat is more like the way we have sum and all that. So concat, it, it opens the bracket, you put everything that you want to concatenate all in one bracket. But the ampersand works like an operator. So the string you want to, the 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 the, the value you want to put, you put ampersand, right? And then put the next one, put ampersand, and then put the next one. That is more like plus. So the way we plus one and two, instead of the plus, we use ampersand. That's 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 the idea. So now remember this column says that the orientation of the name is the last name first before the first name, right? So we'll follow the orientation the way they have said it, right? So we'll first of all type equal sign. Remember, before you initiate any formula, equal sign, don't always, don't forget. Equal sign. Now, what is the last name? The last name is Smith, right? Now, let's just try something and, and just give you an example. So if we just put ampersand, which is shift seven, depending on what you are using, if you are using window, it should be shift seven for Mac. I'm sorry, um, I don't know where you are, but look this sign on, on your keyboard. This is what called ampersand. So look for it on your keyboard and press it. So this and this and click this. So if you look at this, Smith Nancy is in is somehow, that's, it, it doesn't make sense. It, it's joined it together because you're using ampersand, you joined it together. But in a, in, a, in a way to write it in a proper way, we can easily just modify this by saying the, the last name plus. Remember, the ampersand is like another way of saying plus in terms of string, when dealing with string data types in Excel. Ampersand, don't forget. Now, the last name, then we introduce a string. Remember, because you are dealing with a string, is how you introduce a string in a formula is double quotation mark. Double quotation marks, please. That's open and close double quotation. That's how you introduce a string into a formula. So now introduce comma. That's the string that will then create a space and then put another string to close that particular. So what we've done here is to put comma and a little space between the last name and the first name, just like we have here, the last name, comma, space, the first name. That is what we are doing here. This is the last name. Then ampersand, introduce another string, right? And then introduce the, uh, then put the ampersand again before you close it with, with. So what ampersand does is, like I said, is a way of adding strings, adding strings together. Instead of using plus, use ampersand for Excel. Don't forget this. So now the way it is here now means that 
who can apply it and it will come in the orientation, which is last name, comma, first name. Now, which you can see now, this is last name, Smith, last name, comma, space, then Nancy, the first name. Now, I remember what we said in, in the class one, that's why I, I said for those that are just joining and it, this happened to be the first, the first class, you may need to, which I will show it up here again on the, on the card. You may need to move to class one so that you can understand, follow the, the tutorial from the scratch so you don't miss out on anything. So now that we've done this, we'll use our fill button. Remember what we said about this is the fill button, right? Either I double tap, double click on this fill button or I drag it. Once I do it, it will fill out the rest of these columns using this formula that we've done here. So double tap. That's what we call flash fill, right? You can double tap or like, I mean, auto fill. So, sorry, it's called, there is flash fill, there is auto fill. That particular one is auto fill, which is to automatically fill in the rest using the word, the first formula. So that is what we did there. Another way, so this is for the orientation of the last name, comma, the first name. Now in the full name, full name is, the, the actual way you write your full name is your first name and your last name. That's how you write your full name. So using the orientation of the full name, let us try this again. we we'll say equal sign. This is our first name, right? Put ampersign, ampersign, right? Then create, create what? An empty space. How do you create an empty space? Open a string of what? An empty space. Then put the, Close the string again, put your ampersand, and then put the last name. That's it. So you see, this is the full name, which is where the first name is coming first before the last name. So now that we've done this, you can also autofill. Either you double tap, you see the black cross means you can double tap or you can drag. So we we'll double tap here so let us drag here so you see that you can drag it here and it's the same you can literally see this and that now for the rest of this just for more details um read the instructions follow through and then learn see how some of these things are, are applied the like i said the instructions are, are pretty clear but if you have any issues just put it on the comment section and uh, i will attend to you um now moving to the if statement now this is where you start getting interested right now uh following the instruction by the left you see where they are explaining the where an input if statement is simply where there is an input based on a particular criteria so if you follow this instruction it says if if c9 this is c9 what we have here is c9 apple is c9 or whatever that is in that cell if that cell is equals to apple this is how if statement works you open the if statement it asks you to put the value or what we call logic so this is where the logic is this is what we call the logic what i've seen what i've highlighted here is what the logic right so if this is equal to this that's the logic or the criteria or the condition so if this is this right what happens when it's true so if this is equal to this which we will call true statement what should we do that is the next thing so if this is this is the logic which is if C9 is equal to this, that's the logic that we are reading. What do we do when it is true is the next thing. What do we do when it is false is the next, is, the, is, is following it. That's pretty clear. So this is just my simple explanation. Let me just do it by formula now. So equal sign will type if, if, 
if that is the logical test, the way I've explained it. So the, your logical test is the, that this, right? That this is equals to, if this is equals to Apple, sorry. Remember what I said in, in every um formula, if you want to introduce a string, you have to put it in a double quotation open and close. So we'll type Apple. We'll type Apple, close it, now put comma. So the logical test here is if whatever that is here is equal to Apple, right? Then we'll say true. We'll just type true. We'll, we'll type true. As, as a string, please. We'll type it as a string. Right? That's, we we'll have to type it as a string. Um, true. This is, this is what it should do when it is what true. If, if it is not false, as simple as that. So we'll do false. Then close the brackets, right? You see? Now, because whatever that is here is Apple, that's why it is true. Now, for us to test that formula, for us to test that formula, if we drag it, if we drag this down, it will be false because whatever that is applied here, because when we drag it, it will no longer be applying here, it will be applying here. So if we drag that from here down, it will be false. Now, if you click on that formula, you see that it is no longer considering C, C9 here. It is considering C10 because what we have copied that formula, the formula that we applied on this row. We have applied, when, when you are dragging, it means you are copying that formula down to the rest of the rows. So when we drag it to this, then it, it, it applies for this particular row, which is what, C10. But because C10 is not equals to Apple, that is why it is false. Are you seeing it? So this is like how if statement works. So another way we can go around this is, let's look at what happened here. So this is copy formula. So this is another way we can copy the formula. So you see, to copy formula is to autofill. This is another way we can copy what the formula. Now let's try another statement here. Looking at the number three. So he says, We are, we are creating an if statement based on a particular what condition. Now, what do we do? Equal sign, then we create if statement. If, what is the logical test? The logical test is if C12 is less than 100, less than 100, It's less than 100. You can put number in Excel, in, a, in an Excel formula bar. You don't need to put it in a string. You can just put number to recognize it, comma. So that, that is the logical test. For if statement to, I mean, the, it, sometimes an if statement might need a logical test to determine when something is true or when something is false. Sometimes it can come as a logical test Sometimes it can just come as a value. It may not necessarily need to be anything. It can just come as a value. So if, if whatever that is here is less than 100, put comma. I want you to see how this is moving. See, what we are still in logical test, right? If I put comma, it will move to the next 10, which is 
value if true. So what happens when whatever that is here is 100? What happens? Most cases, is a, if, if it is a statement, that's where you now open a string to put the statement that you want. Remember what we call a string, double quotation, Oh, sorry, I, I really typed this once. So double quotation back to where we are. I I I once I include the dot it push the the brackets at once. So body quotation uh, is so that man is the coding character I'm used to opening my double quotation and then put something inside of it at once. Um so double quotation less 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 than 100 that is the statement you are making now this 100 i need you to see the something here this 100 don't need to be separate because it is inside the statement you are making so you don't need to say oh why are we putting this 100 here it's already inside a statement you are making which is that statement is less than 100 so let that tell us that it is less than what 100. So we say less than 100. Then, when it is false, what do we say? We say greater than or equals to because it can be 100. Because that logical test is saying only when it's 100, so only when it's less than 100 that it is true. So that means if it is 100 what happens if it is greater than 100 what happens so there are only two probabilities here for the first statement so that first statement is either that thing is equals to 100 or it is greater than 100 that's the two remaining probabilities for the first statement that's why we for that first statement you know you have to be a bit you have to be a bit uh, uh, systematic in in or technical in the, in in such statements so that it makes sense in the actual in in in, in reality. So now we will now say greater than greater than or greater than or equal to hundred. So, if we go through it again, we go through it again, we see here, this is the logical test, right? Which is if 50 or whatever that is here is less than 100, not 50 is about whatever that is here because it's about the cell value. So, if whatever that is here is less than 100, say less than 100 that is value if true then put comma to move to the next statement then value if false if it is not less than 100 what should the statement be that's why we say greater than or equals to 100 so if it is not less than 100 eh it is either greater than 100 or it is exactly 100. That's just the two probabilities left. So we have to cover all the probabilities in your statement. So here we we'll close our bracket. Remember to close your bracket and then press enter. It says less than 100. So you see here, it says less than 100. If you want to test your formula, Try a different value and see if that formula works. It is less than 100 because it is 50. Just try and, you know, just be curious. Try and see what happens when it is another value. So let's put, let's say 120 here. If we put 120, you see, greater than or equals to 100. And that is correct. 120 is greater than or it is greater than 100. Right, if we put on, so it, it's telling us that oh, either whatever that is here is telling us that whatever that is here is either that it is greater than 100 or it is what equals to 100. That's the statement here. 
I can also pull 100 and see what it says. Right? Then it says, see what it says. It says, still the same statement. Now I'm going to use this also to teach us what we call nested ifs or nested nested if statement. We call them, we call them nested if statement. That is if inside if or or no, let me separate them. There is nested if and there is ifs. So ifs takes two conditions or more than one condition. That is if statement, right? If statement takes more than one what condition. So if this is this, it takes two conditions for something to be true or more than it if takes more than one condition for some or more than one logical test for something to be true. That is how it works. So what's what's uh what are, what conditions can we give the then let's let's put it let's let's put a try here for the if statement. Let's just use this particular part to learn, which I, I mean if you go down, we've explained a lot of things about the ifs, but let me add the ifs and so you can see how some of these things work. Now for here, so let's say, let's say we use if. If, there is if, there is if, and there is if, there is if now. If now is like, if there is nothing, that's another way. If there is nothing, what do we do? If that cell is empty, what do you do? That's what we say, if now. So if there is error, what do you do? So you see how many if, if type of formulas that we have. There is if, normal if, there is if error, see, returns value. If error expression, if returns, it returns value if error, if expression is an error. And the value of the expression is self otherwise. So this one again say returns the value we specify if the expression re resolves to NA. So if that particular expression resolves to NA, some sort of maybe there is there is nothing in it, or is an empty cell, which is probably the, the type of error. Maybe there is there is is an empty cell or that value can be found. That's where you get something like any or do something. So these are like different criteria. These are under if that says, see, checks one or more conditions are met. So the ifs is either one or it, it takes, it, it, if it's just one condition is met before something is true or false. Ifs can take more than one condition for something to be true or false. That is, so let's try that and see how we can apply that. So you see what I say? So logical test one, right? So logical test one, which is the first if. So is if this, whatever that is there, is less than 100, right? If it is less than 100. What happens if it is less than 100? We are following the steps. If it is less than 100, what happens? So if it is if it is less than 100, value if true. So we say, so we say, um, we say, Less than 100, we say less than 100, right? Less than 100. Then it takes in another logic. What other logic do you want to say? So we say, okay, if it is less than 100, say less than 100. If another one, if, which is, we click on this again, if it is, if it is greater than 100, logical test two, what do we say if true? 
So first one is if it is less than 100, say less than 100. Logical test two, if it is greater than 100, what happens if that is true? So put, say, greater than 100. Greater than 100. Right? It, it takes in as many conditions as possible as you want. If you like put 1,000 conditions, it will take in all. That's the essence of ifs, like plural. Ifs, taking all the conditions that you want to put on it. So if it is greater than, if it is less than 100, say less than 100. If it is greater than 100, say less than, say greater than 100. Now, because I want to separate all the possibilities, then I'll I'll put the, the third logic, which is if 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 it is equals to hundred, right? If it is equals to hundred, what happens when it is equals to hundred? I will say say equals hundred, exactly hundred. Exactly 100. I can even put exclamation. Right? Now we've covered all the conditions that we want. So the if statement takes one condition and asks us what to do when it is what? True and when it is false. One condition must be met. But if takes as many conditions as possible. Each condition that is met, what should happen when that condition is met? Right? So, but at every point in time, there can only be one condition in the actual sense that will met at one, sorry, at one instance. There can only be one condition that must be met at one instance. That value can be less than 100 and greater than 100 at the same time. It can never. So that's why he's telling us when it's, when it's true, what happens? If all of them, if none of them is true, nothing will be there. If none of them, but they can't, with what we've done, there can't be a way we we'll escape it. For instance, maybe let's say we we'll escape the third one, then nothing will be there. It will only just, the formula will remain until there is something, right? So with all of this, let's apply this. Now, you see what I say, because it is 100, Using the if you say exactly 100, yay, exactly 100. Let's say when it is 50, let's see what it does. Say, oh, it's less than 100, right? Let's see what it, what it says when it is more than 100. So 120, oh, greater than 100. So as many as conditions you want to put on it, you put, it will take in all the conditions. So. This is for what if this is uh, so I will use the if we use the if to <laughs>
if we use an if statement here to 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 give us so the if statement here is going to is going to put a number so a number will appear here and here only if something is met so what is that condition so if the tax rate is uh, most of us use excel um invoice for excel or something like that uh, we've seen invoice settings in excel so this these are the kind of things you see in invoice templates it, is there tax is, the, is there sales tax applied to that invoice if it is yes what happens if it is no what happens that is exactly where you see that kind of this is a little bit of excel for for accounting but the if statement is very very important because as a data analyst you can apply if statements to make a particular maybe in your data exploratory or anything so all of these are all of these are, are called data exploratory so these are different ways you can manipulate your data and you are in a particular way that you want it to be so that's why if statement is very very important so now let's 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 take this bit by bit. Now, if, first of all, what I will do here, I will show you how to, first of all, save. Let's say that you don't have that anywhere, right? So let's say that your tax rate is 7.5, right? Percent. I think that's Niger tax rates. So if you're using Nigerian tax rates, 0.75. 0.075, I mean. Yes, 7.5%. So let's say this is the tax rate that you want to apply to the to this, right? Now, there are two ways that we can use. I will show I will I will show you three ways. I will I will I will, I will, I will give us three ways that we can apply this. First one is you have labeled this to be tax rates. You've called this to be your tax rates. Right? So maybe there is where you wrote something called tax rate. So this is, this tells you this is tax rate that you are working with, right? Which is 0 0.3. So see how we can apply this. Now, using if statement, right? So we say, if was sign, let me use here. If was sign, if, right? If, now what is the logical test? This is the logical test that, that we are going to use now. If this is, if here turns to yes, which means, they can be yes and they can be no. So if whatever that is here is equals to yes, that's the logical test, right? If whatever that is here is equals to yes, that's the logical test. What happens if it is yes? So what happens is we want the subtotal, which is whatever that is here, right? times the tax rate. That's how you check your tax rate. The tax rate is the tax upon the, the subtotal of your goods. So uh, that's why it's, it's in percent. So this times the subtotal, which is the, the, the subtotal of, of, the, of the products in the invoice. So one way we can say, the 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 subtotal times this because we remember this is case one where we have put out the value on the cell like this then this time this right then we say comma false if it is false then just if it is false put zero we can yes if it is false we we'll put zero or nothing so we we'll just say zero if it is false zero so first one is if whatever that is here is yes so which means is there tax is there tax on the on the sales 
if it is yes, then that sales times your tax rate becomes the value here. If there is none, then put zero, which means there is no tax rate. That is that is the statement we've made here. We'll say equal sign. So if you see now, this is simply saying, oh, there is tax rate, therefore the the tax on this is 2.23, which is 7.5% of what was of of the of the products of the total. So 7.5% of the total is this because there is tax. Let's see when remember uh I taught us data validation, data va validation in class one. So in that in data validation in class one, see that here if we select here to be no, you see it will be zero zero. If we select here to be yes, it will be two point something. That's how it works. So that is how you use if statement to take an action when when a particular condition is met. That is simply what if if statement is all about. Take an action when a particular condition is met. The same goes here. now. I said that I was going to show us three ways. Now this is first. This is what first um way to do it. Now another way instead of putting it in a self value. Right, I can put it as as a number inside, as a constant inside. Instead of using a cell value, I can put it as what a number inside, which is zero point zero seven five. Yes, I can put it as what here. I put it as a value inside, like as a constant value inside the formula. So either is cell value, case one, case two, constant value, which is the one you type inside the formula. If we okay it, it's still, it's still the same answer. It's still the same thing. So either you type in that rate inside the formula, which I mean, I don't recommend. You need to show all workings. Let people see what you've done. So how did you calculate this? They need to know what rate you are using, right? They need to see the rates you have used to calculate the tax rate. Do you get? Then there is also another way, which is what we call named formula. We can name our own formula using, um, if you go to formulas, using name manager. We can name this value as a name manager, right? So we can say, instead of writing it as a text, as a cell value here, we can click on here, and go to name manager and go to new. If we go to new, we can call whatever that is. We go to source. So which means refer. Refer is where you are referring. You are referring only to this place. Right? Good. So we are referring to that place, only that particular place. That's where you are referring. That's why it's locked. We'll call it tax rate. Tax rate. Right? And then okay. So we have named the value so that we can use it as we can type it as a formula in which you will see. Remember, the name of that the name of this value is tax rate. We'll say okay. This is how you can name something. We'll okay it. You see the name. See where. See how you can see other values that people say people can even say it can it can be as a table it can be there are table formats there are value formats there are, so there are a lot of things you can save right we'll close it now let's go to data formula and see how we can apply it now remember in the in the if true statement instead of typing we use the sorry excuse me we use the cell value, case one. Use the actual, the constant value inside the formula, case two. Case three is where you can, once I just type tax rate, it will come out. You see, this is the tax rate named as a formula. Once you type 
that which you've saved it with, it will come out. So what that means is I can apply this tax rate in any so where 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 it becomes useful is if if it is in a case where you are going to apply this particular rate in almost all the sheets you have on that particular workbook. So instead of saving it, putting a cell value in a particular sheet, that is where you can save it as a formula so that you don't just only use it here, you can use it here, use it here, use it here, use it in, on, 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 on any part of that workbook. That is the essence of what saving value as a formula. So when this is yes, it says subtotal times saved formula, which is tax rates because we have named it, and then it will still give us the same result. Case one, sell value, which is if it's just only on that sheet that you are working, that's that's probably when I can recommend this. Case two is maybe if it's just maybe where it is, you just want to type fast. So you are or you are not concerned about um or maybe you don't want you don't want to you are giving it to see the rate that you've typed that you are using to see the rate the percentage rate. That's where you can type in inside that formula so that they don't even see what you are using. Or where you know that you're going to apply that rate in all other sheets of that workbook, that's where you can use what named manager. So these are three different ways now. Now, um, with what I've, I've explained, try this with what we have here. I mean, I think I as try and see if you can also get this. Uh, if you follow what we've done here, um, you can see, I think I've named the shipping. So see how you can use the actual, use constant value here. I mean, if you follow the instructions, this is your use the constant value. You can use the constant value, which is 1.2, 1.25 for that of the shipping. Okay. Um, so let's move to VLOOKUP. We did a, a little bit of VLOOKUP in our class one, but we'll just touch it just as a sort of um, to freshen our mind on how the VLOOKUP works. So VLOOKUP is just simply a way of you, you know, searching, some, searching something using a particular value. Now, for instance, if we don't know the amount of the apples, right? We don't know the amount of the apples, but we can get that amount using what VLOOKUP. Or if you want, if you want to, maybe like um, the way you go to hotels or something like that, and sometimes if they want to know the guests in the room, all they just need is they some of the the receptionists you see that use their system. These are some of the things you see. All they just need is to type the room the room number, and it. The, the rest of the column can pull out the details of the guest in that particular room at that particular time if they have keyed it in into their system. So that's how VLOOKUP works and how the essence of VLOOKUP. So here, let's say we want to get the amount of Apple here. What we'll do is equal sign VLOOKUP, remember the will tap to open up the bracket. So it's asking us what are we looking for? The value we are looking for is here, whatever that is in that place, comma. The table array that we are looking for is, now, one thing about value cover, and that is very, very important, that cell that we are looking for has to be the first column. Please, mark it somewhere. It has to be the first column. It cannot be in the middle. It cannot be in the middle of that table. So there are two things involved. Even if it's in the middle, the range of what you are selecting will have to start from. So let's say there, there are other columns before this fruit. And I'm only concerned about this fruit and other columns, probably. But the main thing is whatever you are searching for, 
in your table array or range, it has to start from that particular, it has to be the number one. Because what we are looking for is a type of fruit. So our fruit column will be number one. This is very, very important. Now, in some cases, especially cases where we, if you need to drag that VLOOKUP across, if you need to drag it across, it is wise to lock that range using F4. You lock it using F4. Uh, for those um for those using for those using Mac, I think I think um if I can still remember for those using Mac, once 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 I get that, I'll put that on the screen, which you should see now. For those using Mac, you use this. Um but for those using Windows, just your F4 using L4 to lock that range. So we have locked here, even if we are dragging that formula down, it will not, it will not affect our formula because we have locked the range. So we'll put comma. Now the column index is, is now asking us what is from the first column counting, what is the column what is the num? What is the position of the column we are looking for? What is the column? What is the position that is column index? So, what is the column index number of what you want to get? Remember, what you want to get is the amount based on the fruit name, right? So, that amount, if we start counting from the first column, which in this case is the fruit column. If the first column is one, that amount is two. There are cases where that amount, what you are looking for might be in, in the first column, which we did in our class one. That's why I keep referring us to class one for those who haven't listened to, who haven't followed through that particular tutorial. So what we are looking for is column index number two after the first column, which is amount. Therefore, we'll put what two comma, and then it asks us range. I mean, once you put to um, it asks us, is it an exact match? Yes, we want an exact match, which is what we'll put to what force means exact match, exactly whatever that is there. Get it, use whatever that is there. So we select force and then we'll close our bracket. Now, you see, it tells us 50 because it is what? If you check Apple, the amount of Apple is 50. Now, if I type lemon here, not type because there is already a data validation, which I also taught in class one. So if you select through the list and select orange, you see, the amount will change because orange is 20. If we select bananas, the amount will change because banana is 60. Select lemon the amount will change because it is what 40. That's how it works. Work with what I've done here, apply yours here. Whatever I've done here, apply yours here and see how that works. You can even go for that. The, the instructions are pretty clear. Follow through. I always recommend that you go down and you know read further, do further exercises on that so that you can know it more and know so many ways that you can walk around it, right? Now for the conditional, for the conditional functions, you saw what we do with the if statement to put out, to take an action or to say something or to do something based on a particular word criteria. That is also what, what we that is sort of the things that we also do here. Now, but in this case, it's taking, it's kind of like joining two formulas together where if something is true, do this, sum if, count if, average if. So these are like a condition must be met first in a particular range before another function is taken. That's why we call the conditional function. It is a function just like sum, count, 
average and all that. These are all functions, but they're not just ordinary functions. They can only apply when a particular condition has been met. That is the kind of thing that we have here. So in this case, in this case, so what we are going to do is to, let's say that we want to sum, we want to sum all the amounts of, of the apple fruits here. So these are like different arrays of oranges. And, so let's say we want to sum all the amount of the apple fruits here. So what we'll do is equal sign, sum if. So there is sum if, remember, the same way, anything that we have in sum if, it can also apply in sum ifs, because we have if and we have ifs. So exactly what we did with the ifs is the same thing with the sum ifs, which is taking to more than one condition. It can take more than one condition. That's where you use sum if. So for sum if, which is one condition, click on sum if, it opens the bracket. So first thing is it asks is the range, right? So the range is what it asks. So that range is whatever that is here. We'll select these two. Right? That is the range. Remember, if it is a formula you will drag, always lock your range or table array or those sort of things. So all this range, table array, if it is a formula you will drag across, drag across or drag down, always remember to what? To lock your range. It is a good practice. Lock your range use, using F4 using f4 now the criteria what is the criteria criteria is okay from the range what is the criteria criteria is when it is apple so you just simply type what the the way remember you type it the way it is in that range which is apples there is s if you type apple it's not gonna do anything because there is no apple here what we have here is apples. So you have to make sure that your criteria meets exactly what is inside your range. So that's, that is what we mean by criteria. Criteria is when the fruit is apple, comma, then what happens? So that's why we call it sum if. So when it is apple, so it's not asking you what is the sum range. Remember, there is a range and there is a sum range. So for the sum range is whatever that is here. This is this is sum range is where you want it to sum. What are the things you want it to sum? Where does it pick those range? From which range does it should it sum all the fruits that are apple? Because once you understand this in a layman terms, it's very easy. So. The first one is range, which is the whole table. The criteria, which is what criteria should be made from that range. Then some ranges, that particular, this time around, it is amount. Maybe in your case, it might be, it might be, it might be all the, all the amounts of apples sold in January. So your case might be, the amounts might be different, different months. So it asks you, what is what is the sum range? So either you select one one of the months, depending on what you want, or you select the whole of the month. So these are all ways. So sum range is also very very important, and you should also what lock it. Always lock your ranges. Very very important. Using F four, we'll lock it, and then we'll close the brackets. And then. We'll so if you see, if you see, right, let's take all the apples and sum them and see how true is it. So the first apple is 50. The second apple is 50. The third apple is 50. So sum of 50, sum of 50 in three places is 150, is it not? So it's, at the minimal level, it's always good to like cross check your, just to make sure that it, Nothing is wrong that you didn't do it in the wrong way, right? So this is one way for summing where it is summing simply is simply just telling you the total of all the apples sold. 
in that table. Maybe in the reality, it might be a very big data set, but it's still the same thing that applies. All you need to do is just understand the logic of how it works. Now, let's even select a different, let's say it is no longer Apple that we are looking for. Let's say orange. Now, let's see if that is correct. We selected orange and it's still giving us 150. Let's check. The first orange is what? 20. Second orange is Well done. So there is an issue here, right? Is now because we, we see this to orange, is still the same? I mean, it, it didn't. So in this kind of thing, right? It only apply when it is true. It's only apply when it is true. So in this case, we can say if if this is because in the actual sense, what we have here is orange is orange, but it's still giving us shift. Do you know why? Because in the formula, we categorically put that it's it has to be what apples before it will submit. But there is no criteria to tell us what happens when it is not apple. That is the difference here. What happens when it is not Apple? So in such case, how do you handle it? Such cases, you can then use your if. In such cases, that's where you use your word. If word statement. If this is, if this whole statement is true, what then happens? If it is not true, what then happens? So that's like how we can, you know, that, that is how we can um, apply some of the things here. So if statement, so let, let's let's let, let me let me show you just in case to see how we can apply if inside if as a nested if. So we can say if if so this is the logical test if this is true if um if um for some if let me see how that applies um yeah so okay yeah, so this is what we'll do. Now, if, if brackets, yeah, so if here is not, it um, was sign factoria. Uh, if is not equals to, I'm I'm still trying to check. I'm it's gonna be a trial error because I'm trying to check how to put if it is not. I think equals equals factorial. I'm, I still mix up some coding syntax here, but let me let me confirm if it is not apples. If it is not apples, no, if apples, hold on now. If, yeah, yeah, I don't need to say if it is not. So, if in my if statement, so my logical test is if whatever that is here is apples, then apply the sum if. Into the, the market. Yeah. So in my if statement, this is me combining if and some if. So in my if statement is if whatever that is there 
is equals to apples. Then apply our sum if, right? Which is true. If it is true, apply this. If not, if not, right? Um, say does not apply. So this is the value. This is the value one two. This is the value one two, and now this is the value. Yeah, so this is the value when false. Um, mm -hmm. We say does not apply. So we go back again. So this is the 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 if statement that say if. The C is apples, right? If it is apples, do what? Apply, apply the sum if. No wonder I wasn't seeing this. Uh -huh. Now it has covered it. Apply the sum if. Your bracketing is very, very important because I had two brackets. I needed to close it. So if, so this is first one. If, what is the logical test? If whatever that is here is equals to apples, then sum if, right, which is when it is true, then apply the sum of that we've done. But if it is not true, what should happen when it is not true? We we'll say does not apply, right? Does not apply. Then we we'll close our bracket. You see, and that is all we have here. Uh, let me expand the bracket a bit. Yes. So, because in our summary here, inside that formula, we have already used apples. So, anything that is not apples, the summary here does not apply. So, that's, I mean, I mean these, these are all logical. This is how we can apply some of these things. Now, but if it is apples, it will then apply that sum if. So apples, you see, 150. When it is not apple, maybe another thing does not apply. So it tells the person that, oh, what you are selecting does not apply to the sum if that have already been put here. Because, do you know why? Because that sum it has a constant value that must be met, which is it must be apples. If not, then any other thing you are selecting is wrong. So it has to be what apples. That is what we are what seeking for. So these are like how we can combine some of this thing, right? So let's put it back to apples. Now what we've done, so we apply some if here, right? Now let's try the sum, the sum ifs, so which means two conditions are met, two conditions are met in sum if before the sum can be applied. Let us see how it works. In the equal sign, we put the sum, then the sum ifs. The sum is so it's first of all asking us in the sum if it is first of all asking us what the sum range. Be careful, the sum range. So this is the sum range first, right? Let's lock it. So remember, um, you have to be used to this because maybe we are work, we are doing it in a place where you drag the formula. So once you drag the formula, other things might be wrong. But if you know you're gonna drag the formula, lock your range, lock this range, which is what we've done. Come on. Now criteria one. So, so criteria range. So the criteria range one is um in the food in the in the first one is the food. So the range is here. We select the range. Anything that is range that you are working from a particular table, lock it. 
I keep saying this thing, lock it. So we we'll lock this, which is the criteria, that first criteria we want it to meet, the range where it should meet that criteria, that's what we call criteria range one. We'll lock it. We'll lock it like this. What did I press? Sorry. <laughs> F4. If I didn't. Why do I feel like I made a mistake? Hang on. Okay. Let me lock it again. I don't want the story. Here, F4, and then here, F4 again. Now, the first criteria, which means it has to be, remember, it, it asks us, the first criteria is from which range? We selected the, 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 the food scoring range, right? And then we say, from that range, which condition was it met? We want it to be what? Um, apples. That's what we have from the instruction. Apples. Apples, right? Comma. Now, it's asking us again, because you want to put more than one criteria, right? So, it asks you again, now, what type of Apple is that what so the want the next criteria to be a type of fruit, right? A type of fruit. So that type of fruit we would have to first of all select the type range, which is the criteria range two. Now in that range, you lock it. Lock here. Then put comma. Then what? What criteria must be met from this range? What criteria must be met? We say Florida, which you can see here. Remember to, to type it exactly the way it is. It is case sensitive and every, you have to type it exactly the way it is. Florida. Florida, that's the type we want. So it has to be, it's not just, it's not just, so what, let me explain what this means is, that apple must not just be, let me check if, um, okay, let me check. Is there Apple Florida here? Uh, Fuji. Maybe we we'll use Fuji. Let me check again. Honey crisps. Okay, let's use honey crisps. Honey crisps. Honey crisps. Honey crisps. Honey crisps. Yeah. Honey crisps. Yeah. 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 So it has to be apple and honey crisps. Then we'll close the brackets. Right? Close the brackets. Now you see, two conditions are met. First one is, it has to be apple, right? But if it is apple, but if it is apple and it is not honey crisp type of apple, then don't submit. That is what we call some ifs. So the two conditions that were met is one, it must be apples and it must be what? Honey crisps. That's the two conditions that must be met before what it can now summit. So these are like ways, right? Um, you can try yours. I use apples and honey crisps. I want you to try your sweet oranges and Florida. 
oranges and Florida, right? And see what it, it gives you. So this way you, you test yourself. Now, uh, I mean, I've taught us about um, the 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 view lookup. So I mean, this this time around, using view lookup, using um functions, using function like in start function, not by typing, which you can also see here. If you say equals sign, um, just the way we select we select this D ten. Go to formula. If you follow the instruction, these are like even if you don't sorry, even if you don't remember how the view lookup work again, you can just go to formula, right? Go to inside formula, go to go to formula inside formula. So if we come here, we can search here. We can search any formula that we are looking for V. Look up. You look up. Do you look up. So we can search the formula. So this is the formula, right? So if you search it, we we'll select it. This is in case if you can remember how to apply those formula. So so what are we looking for? What we are looking for is you come here, you select what you are looking for, right? That's what we are looking for. What is the table array? You come here, you select the table array. This is this time around using the actual formula insert. What is the column index of? What is the column index? So remember the way I've explained it to you. So you just type two because this is the column index. And then uh, the range, you just type, which, I mean, it, it tries to explain some of these things to you, which is, this is the range, find an exact match. So we'll just type, we'll just type source. So which stands for exact match. So you see, everything you are typing is, is showing you here, right? And even it has even calculated it already. It calculates it using the function um, box. Once you OK, it's 50. So this is like a different way you can use um, function user to some of these functions. If you can't remember how they work by typing, you can just come here, type the formula, whatever formula that you are looking for, and then apply it. That way, that can also help. Then handling, that of handling error, um, errors in formulas, right? So we can also, Let's take, for instance, we use a VLOOKUP, right? I want you to notice something here. The apple here and the apples here, there is, there is no S in the apple here, and there is S in the apple here. Let's see how you handle such error. How do you trace your error when you make a mistake? So these are very, very important. So we'll say local sign VLOOKUP, select, this is what we're looking for, right? If this is the table array. Because it's just, let me not lock it, but if you are dragging it, you lock it. Then the column index is two. And then it has to be the exact match. And then let's say you enter this. So what this enemy means is, it means, it is an empty search or empty value or it cannot be found or it's an empty cell. There is nothing like that. It is not defined. These are like any, not applicable, not available. This is normal any, the world, no any. So that's what, so how do you trace it? You just come here. If you want to trace your errors, right? You go to the drop box here and then you go to show calculation steps. That's where you check it. You go to show calculation steps. You click on it. Then it shows you what the issue is in the formula. So you see that apple, the apple is, it, it may not be exact, but it can point you to the, to the right direction. So you see the apple is what? Is in italics, meaning there is something wrong here. 
just in case if you're trying to trace your error. So that's why you're saying that look again in your formula and make sure that there is something about this apple. That's why other ones are okay, but there is something wrong here. That's when you see this kind of thing. If you even evaluate it, I mean, it gives you formula means it cannot be found. So it tries to explain to you what type of error that you are what, having. But once you put once you put apples here, you see, once you put apples here, it becomes correct. But if you, if you, if it goes back to apple that it was, uh, if you type apple, uh, yeah, I can never see the apple again. Yeah, if there is nothing there actually. So that's that's like um how you can also so try try again for total here. I mean try yours for total and, and trace your your error and see how you work ar around your error. Remember in class one in in the welcome uh, class notes that we have, we stopped at Dropbox. Now this is a sort of to to finish it up in regards to what we have from our item today. So we'll see how uh, what we call um, quick analysis works. So quick analysis is, you know, in a table like this, when, when you're dealing with tables like this, in a table like this, once you select a range of data, so you see, you see, you see that this is what we call quick analysis quick analysis if you select it it asks you i can do i can do um data bar so what data bar does is is a, is a little bit of a little bit of visualization in terms of the value so it kind of like visualizes the value by instead of looking at the figures that the 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 the, the, the bars kind of like tells you oh which one has Higher figure compared to other. Just looking at the bars, it's a little bit of um, table visualization. It's a, it's a sort of table visualization, which we see in most of accounting spreadsheets and stuff like that. So these are sort of the things that they use. See another one. In terms of th these are usually what we see when 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 is red, when is green, green meaning there is a high figure and there is a low figure. So maybe like it is a sale. It can be this which if you select like this, or you can also select data bars. I mean, uh, so you can clear this and select data bars, right? So this is like different ways. You can also, if you want to clear it again, and maybe select the icon, you have to clear this one, and then maybe select by icon, something like this. So these are like, we we'll call them quick analysis. It's kind of like gives insight. You see, the ones that are green up shows high figures, 200, 150. The ones that are low figure shows down. The ones that are more like in between, in the middle, shows neutral. So this is amber, red. So you use um, red, amber, and green color coding in terms of the icons to kind of like gives you an idea of what, what the figure is all about. Where these helps is for most, maybe like your manager asks you um, the sales of today, and there is a whole lot. So this kind of uh, little table anal uh, analytics or visualization helps the the you or whoever to understand what the table is all about. I'm not having to take minutes to understand the table looking at the figures. So just looking at the figures, I already know that oh. Meat made a very good sales in December without not having to see the figures, just using the word, the icon. So that's one thing with quick analysis. There is a, also a shortcut for quick, anal uh, for quick analysis, which is control Q. So all you need is just put your cursor or select one of the cell in, in that range and then press control Q. Just pr press control Q and then it's, it, it marks it. Right, it selects it and then use it to apply whatever it is that you want to apply. So that's like a shortcut. 
you can also go um go further and see that of the spark line how it works uh control q um can go to the spark line and see how can uh, i i know some of you must have seen this star of so this all called spark line in it kind of like gives so spark line is usually where you have some sort of trend this is october november december so it gives you a trend what that means is that there, there was a high if, if you look at this spark line here you can see 30 15 20 so it kind of like tells you um it, it tells you that oh it came to 30 it started with it went to 30 came down to 15 and increased a little bit if you look at microsoft towards to 20. so if you look here again it says from 25 it has been a what steady increase so this work line kind of like gives an idea of 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 that sales for that particular range of uh, maybe like a trend it kind of like gives an idea of trend of what has happened maybe for the past three weeks or for the past three months like we have in this case or you know something like that that's one thing we can um spark line so remember the other one here is about explaining the the profit and loss of the of the business or something like that why here kind of like gives trend just uh, we call them that's why we call them quick analysis they're like little analytics or table visualization that gives you an idea of what's going on in that table without not having to take much time looking at it so that's all about um data exploration and everything that we need to know so the next one is pivot table so here uh first of all we'll see how we convert uh, which we did in class one how we can convert a range of cell to a table and then from there from being a table how we can insert a pivot table from range of cell um we also see how we can from from pivot table we, we, we apply the excel charts and see how we can apply some of the excel charts and explain some of the excel charts so that's that will be the the last um uh things that we we'll look at in in this particular tutorial and then we'll wrap it up for the next class now for the tables if we look here um this is just a simple range a, a range of cell right so i'm not replacing anything so this is a simple range of cell so it, it, we'll see how we can convert just this range of cell this is all called range of cell We'll see how we can combine this range of cell to a table. There are two ways. Either you select it and what go to insert and click on the table, right? Or you see the you see the alternative there. It's always good to learn your alternatives or you press control what T. So that's another way to what to create a table from a range of cell to a table. All you need to do is just come click on any part of that range of cell and then click Ctrl T. Once you click Ctrl T, it, it, there will be a pop up that asks you, Does your table have headers? Which is my table has headers. So you, you tick it and say yes. Once you tick it, it converts it to a table. As simple as that. Right? Now, when it is in a table, um even from just being a table you can even uh, apply your charts you can even insert charts from just being a table you may not literally even need pivot table so from a table to charts and also from from you can also see how you can also um insert your pivot table and all that. so once you click here all we need to do is just come to see i didn't select anything i just click there come to um come to the insert remember when we are explaining the ribbons and how we can insert our ribbon so you can come to the insert and maybe you see one of the charts let's use one of the line charts and see the and see if there is anything that you see conference uh, at attendance and their year conference attendance and their year so these 
please kind of like gives you insights of what these things they look like, right? So now this year, these are these are like years of today. These are like years, right? Another way we can also do that is to select this, select this, click on the quick, quick, uh, quick adjust status, go to the charts. You see, you see another way we can do that. So either you go to the quick analysis to see what they are like, or you, these are like different charts. It shows you different charts, right? Different charts. So I think I like this. Conference attendance, right? So this is one way you can include your chart just from a table, right? This is one way you can include your chart just from a table, which will explain. So here is simple. It takes in the X axis to be the year, Y here to be the attendance. But we have to, so this, this way we can explain some of the things. So we can look at the chart elements and say what we want to include and what we don't want to include. Now we can say data labels, which means I want to see, I want to see the actual labels, right? I include the actual labels. Let's say I don't want to see the, the, the axis. I can specify the axis that I don't want to see. So I don't want to see the vertical axis. I remove the vertical axis. You see how it's making sense. Let's say I don't like, I, I don't, because I've removed the vertical axis. Now I can say remove the grid lines because vertical axis was actually, the grid line was actually because of the vertical axis. So I can say remove the grid line. And I mean, there are a lot of, I can even add thread line to see how it is growing. You know, so these are like how you can add a lot of things from just the chart. I can also format the chart a bit. You know, I can see different ways I can format the chart, stuff like that. So I can color it. Maybe I can give it like um, a different color. You know, I can even make it to have some gradients in, in it. You know, so when you go even to the design, you can see different ways you can. Looking at this, I can just rename this. Uh, um, yearly conference attendance. So it makes more sense. Yearly conference attendance. Yearly conference attendance. Yearly conference attendance and um, let me type this. Yeah, so I mean, if you look at this, I mean, th this is a simple analytics just from a table. You can see in 2019, 500, 2022, 800. So these are like different ways, just from a simple table, from a, a range of cell converted to a table and even to, and even to what? To, to a chart. So what table helps you to do is, Chart recognizes, you know, the columns and takes them to be the axes and all that. So when it is in a structured data, table is an example of a structured data. You know, it, your chart takes in some of the structured data, knowing oh that you are that that you have that you have columns which will serve as axes. Knowing the ones that are numeric and the ones that are alphanumeric, just looking at this you know so uh we, we we explain some of these things and everything but in the cases where you have where you have two uh, two uh, two numerical val values one can be numer you can use a combo charts you can use your combo charts and stuff like that then again for the pivot table how do you how do you insert pivot table just simply click, click here Go to the insert, click on pivot table. So it's asking you a new worksheet. I want it to be on a 16 sheet, which means this particular worksheet. So I'll click on this worksheet. I don't want you to take me away. 
it asks me the location. I'll click here. I want it to be here. This is where I want it to be. That is the location I want it to be. I'll then say, add this data to the data, and then I will say, okay. Uh, okay. Now the, the pivot table comes out. As simple as that. What is the act idea of pivot table? It's just a way of simplifying tables and rules. In fact, table, pivot table is what ushers us in into understanding um how how data rows and columns work even in other analytical um tools like power bi and tableau and all that once you begin to understand columns and rows and values they are very very important in a case like this so let's say your manager asks you to that he wants to know um how will i put this okay so there are categorical variables and there are numerical va variables. From what we have here, having selected these, we have different variables. One is a date, one is the dimension. We have two dimensions, which is salesperson and product, and then one is amount. So in cases like this, so let's say you want to know um, who, who, sold, who sold higher. Which salesperson made more, made more sales using pivot table? So if you want to know which salesperson made more sales, so you can just drag the salesperson to the row, right? And then drag the amount to values. You, you just see that. As simple as that. Remember, Anne, Mark came twice and Anne came twice, but this is what it does. It summarizes everything. Looking at this, you can see that this this the salesperson with the highest amount sold is Anne, who sold two thousand one fifty using pivot table. Right now, one asks me, how can we then? So, if you want to know in more details what they sold and how it amounted to two thousand five, now you can then drag your products to the columns. Exactly what I did to see what they sold and how it amounted to that. You can see that Lara sold beer. So the the, the total from Anne, Anne sold beer. All the product that Anne sold beer, beer. You can see here Anne beer and Anne beer. Now here we can see that Maria sold soda alone. We can also see that Mark sold soda and wine. We also see that Lara sold only wine. So these are like, if you want to see the breakdown of what they sold by what product. So remember the first thing we did was just the salesperson by the total amount they sold. Now going in detail, this is this is what you do with your colleagues. If you want to now go in details, if you want to go in detail, it can be product, it can be in some cases, it might be it can be in months. Let's say total sales made in a year. You see, oh, this salesperson made this social amount of sales on, this is the total amount they sold for that year. But if you want to go in more details to know for that particular year, what did they sell in January? What did they sell in November? What did they sell? So those kind of things, you drag the month column, you drag the month variable to the column. That's how you can see stuff. So this is just simple way of, uh, Applying pivot table is very, very, the idea of pivot table is for you to understand how it works, which is row labels, columns, and values. Once you understand what to put to what, right? There is no way, when looking at it, amount is the only value variable here. Amount is the only value variable here. One can also, there is also a, a way we can also use, let's say if we want to know how many, how many products we are sold by each of them, how many products we are sold by what, each of them, then we can drag the products to the values because this time around we want it by count, 
Once you drag dimensional variables to the values, it uses count because that's the only thing it can do with a dimensional variable. What are dimensional variables? Sales, the ones that just, they are dimensions, they are not, they are not values, they are names. It can be name of a person, of a product, it can be city, it can be country. These are like what we call variable, they are categorical. They are categorical, they can appear more than once. You know, these are like stuff like that. Um, so if I drag this now to the amount, let's see what happens. So it's what I said about count. So if we drag that product to so that you know the amount and the account of product they sold, now we can see it. And sold what you can see there that and sold some of some of these for what two counts of products, right? You can also see Laura. One, this guy, Mark, Mark sold what two. You can see Mark came twice. See Mark, Mark sold soda. Mark, this is Mark, sold soda. And Mark also sold wine and sold beer and also sold beer again. So that's, that's the two you are seeing. Mark and sold the product. He said the two, the two, the two and sold beer two beers. Why the two Mark sold beer, soda and wine? So this is one way if you want to just know the sales, the sales persons by the count of product they sold, just drag that product to the values. It will automatically turn it to count. But if you want to know the spread of the amount they sold by the product, then you have to take it out and then drag the product to the column. As simple as, now dates can serve as a filter, so we can drag the date as a filter. So we we'll use the date as a filter. We can select let's for that particular what let's say you want to know what they sold on a particular date. You can select this on a particular date. It was Mark that sold this. On this date, it was Laura that sold this. So these are like ways. Any other thing can also form as short term. Um, another thing, uh, let's see, let's drag this here. So this time around, product is serving as a filter. So this is what they sold, and there are some. So if you want to know who and who sold beer, you just select beer. I see that it was only and that sold beer. If you want to know who and who sold soda, select soda. See that Maria and Mark sold soda, and this is the amount they sold. So this is just, once you begin to understand your pivot table, everything is set for you. It means you are ready for the next phase of this, which is what data analysis, when we begin to talk about dashboard and all that. So um, I encourage you guys to, I mean, go further with the pivot table, get to understand these Try some of these exercises on your own, and um, I believe you you'll be you, you'll be on the right track. Now we've seen how important it is to see how we can handle our data in data exploratory analysis. The, we've seen the, the use of the quick analysis. Quick analysis is everything because in quick analysis you can see conditional formatting. You can see data bars you can see up, um insert of charts you know there are a lot of things we can do with just quick analysis control q we, we, we also saw um some of the the functions that we use in the if statement if conditional statements and stuff like that error handling we've also seen how um we apply some charts and pivot table so the next one that we'll look at um, is the proper data analysis, data visualization using Excel dashboard. You know, all this while we've, read, we've all been talking about rows and columns and cells. In next one, you will see that we can create proper data visualization, a full dashboard using Excel. So stay tuned and, and make sure you are in my next class. Please continue to like, share, comment. Uh, and then subscribe to my channel.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much.